Yo, what's going on people? My name's Lou, and if you're new to this channel, we make cool music video effects uh, right here in DaVinci Resolve Studio. And today we're going to be learning about making some dynamic lens flares, so let's go ahead and just get straight into the tutorial. First of all, you want to grab your clip, and then make it into a compound. We're then going to come to our fusion node. We're then going to just make sure we're at zero, the first frame of your clip, and then control space, and then type in tracker. I love the IntelliTrack on DaVinci Resolve. It's it's very um, functional and very responsive. So you should be um, you should get a nice and easy track quite simply. So I found a spot here. Um, you want to make sure your subject doesn't cross the track. So I've selected it outside, just outside of him, um, and that way we can get a clean, smooth track. So let's run that. Once that's done, you want to come to Operation, Match, Move. Come to our lens flares, and then we're going to go to our position, right click on position, and then connect to our IntelliTrack, and then position. Now, if we just start it from here, we can see straight away, that looks really cool. Let's go back. Now, this is just a standard preset, but uh, I think we want something a little bit more cinematic, something that fits the vibe a little bit more. So I recommend you come and look at the presets, but I'm going to come down to Anamorphic Handicam. And you see how they dynamically interact with the environment. So it's not just an overlay, uh, which can look quite cheap. You're actually getting something that moves um, and connects with the camera as if it were actually filmed on an anamorphic lens. So it's really clean, really nice. And um, that was pretty simple, but we can make a few adjustments. So let's go in and maybe colorize the result. I'm just going to make it blend more with the actual environment. So you can see they've got some nice teal, blues and oranges going on here. So let's try and find a blue, like a light blue. Now you can obviously adjust further. So the glare brightness, maybe bring that up a little bit. The global scaling. I'm just going to keep, for the sake of this uh, tutorial, I'm going to keep this at one. The anamorphism stretches it out more. All of these things you can play around with and really dial in uh, what you're looking for. Um, the other cool thing we can do is add a light source. Um, so the masking of the light source, which will then interact with the highlights of the environment. So if you bring this mask threshold up, it will start to dim. But it will start to dim because what it's doing is it's noticing where the light and where the shadows are in the actual image and it will bright and uh, decrease in brightness depending on that um, that value so if we come back to our full screen now it looks quite intense here but for the sake of this tutorial like i just said i'm just going to keep it nice and bright so we can see what we're really using and sort of the how the effect works but i love this i love how this moves around connects with the camera and you can add as many of these as you want you just do exactly the same process let's come back let's go into our lens flare let's have a look at some of the other things global defocus that will obviously give it a bit of a blur the global brightness the saturation yeah, i think if we bring the saturation down you kind of uh, get the actual light source coming through so for me, I tend to want to make things a bit more cinematic and realistic, so I don't overdo it, but there are certain instances where you certainly overdo it and push it because it's uh, you know a bit abstract and it fits with the art style of a certain music video or, or edit you're doing. I just flick through some other ones, sci-fi. This looks cool as well, actually. Let's go and add some color to it. This has got more of the uh, sort of the reflection of the blades, the aperture blade you can start to see come through. And this is still down here, so if we play this. You know, and that looks really clean. Um, there's another thing we can also do, which is lens reflections. Now this is a different effect that will work differently, um, but it sort of ties into the uh, the aesthetic and the lens flare sort of thing we've got going on here. So you can obviously keep the lens flare and then add this on top or just use this on its own. 
Uh, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve, basically. Um, so if we come to our lens center and we do exactly the same thing, as you can see, you've got the lights that are interacting um, with the environment, but they're actually now connected to the environment as well. So they're not just overlaid, they're actually moving. Um, let me just pause that. They're moving in tandem with the objects um, around them. Um, and there's a lot more options in this. I'm not going to go through them all, but you can have a play around. You could get some really um, interesting effects. Come to isolation controls and we can brighten this. Gamma. Maybe we change the color. You've got presets as well. Bokeh. Let's just brighten this up so you can see. Prism. Not quite sure what that is, but you can see it's been reflected here. So you can get some really cool, interesting effects. Plane. Glints. Let's go have a look. And that's pretty much it guys i think uh yeah this is a really strong tool to use and like i said at the beginning this is dynamic it interacts with the environment it's not an overlay it's not a static and it's not just using a sort of a you know a, a composite mode to put a lens flare on top you're actually getting something that interacts with the environment um yeah so go ahead try this one out it's a quick easy um so yeah go ahead try this one out it's quick and easy and it's probably done like so yeah, go ahead and try this one out. It's like three steps, really simple, really easy to do. Um, and yeah, and that's it from me, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.